Okay, so hi for everyone. This is Kalen from Poker Eye Mania. And today we have a um, poker tool related coaching. I made here some some guidelines which but I will will be going through here. So I talked on the first first part we will be talking mostly about hold M manager to about how to use and says for how to use it for analyzing your sessions basically mostly and then on the we will have some sort of short break and then probably focus on hand analyzing related stuff more so if audio and stream or video is working correctly then please comment something on the chat and yeah good evening for everyone so hold the manager tool basically of course first thing when you get tracker is to check that you have hand history sa saving option on in your poker client and that you have have it and, and importing uh, well and importing on so that it detects detects the hand histories and if that's working then you should should have heart in your game as well and, or table first about about the hard side you can see find the hard settings on whole manager 2 in here and from here you find the hard filters is is the one that allows you to filter statistics depending of the number of players so this is something i would recommend to do especially for players playing on sit and go games because you are often often in situation that you have a lot of hands on the wheel lane or decent amount of hands on the wheel lanes uh, from short-handed and full full tables for example playing 9mx stt but in mtt it's not necessarily that important because because you are less often in short-handed situations in general and i can open the twitch that i don't actually have it visible now don't really have it visible now but let's open it it with chat okay so this is something i would recommend to do and in here you can see that in heads up i'm going to use just heads up hands because often players will be changing their play style kind of in heads up quite easily so i see i see some decent value in that option and in here i have have it set in so that i don't have basically full table statistics on short-handed situations but i also don't have just like in four-handed that i don't just have four-handed statistics like here it it would be i want to keep a bit wider range of data always in use so you are less often in a situation where you don't have suddenly have any any sort of statistics on the villain 
by using a bit wider wider data, it's going to happen less rarely. You can also well in here you can also define that how how old hands you want to be want to be used in HUD so that if you don't I think six man, months for example is okay that you don't have like your old statistics because we lens tend to change their play as well so I think something like three months would probably be something on the minimum side for that setting and here on the tournament filters you can also define define filters that uh, well, uh, uh, related to stack depth so that you would see how players play in with short stack or deeper stacks but I haven't personally used this ever and basically more more filtering you are doing the biggest problem is that then the data data you have on the players is going to be smaller and smaller so it can be one of the problems using this but pro can be usable as well and then basically the most important one is the hard designer and here you can see my my part I'm using most of time So basically first thing I would like to ask from the audience, audience, audience here is that why, why, uh, why you want to use HUD? Can someone give easy answer? Why to use hard? What is the what, what we try to achieve by using it? For some reason, my Twitch pop-out chat doesn't work. Just black screen, but yeah. So try to answer on the man poker money English chat. <laughs> yeah. So as multiple watchers say that it's for for info, extra info on the wheel lane. And that's the main point that you should always have certain default lines in your game so that you you have reasoning for doing something as default and then if you have some sort of info on the guy you can adjust from that line and to make more optimal de decision against against the player now, second question from, from you guys would be that what is in your opinion most important statistic you can ha have in your heart? most important ones but 
check if I, if there is some sort of simple well, you can for example change some of these so most simplistic sort of what would be something like Deleted to all. Oh. I haven't been using this one actually. In so we can we should be removing these by yeah, clicking here. Okay. So basically, this is the most most simple heart you could have basically for our success suggestion on the chat that using the creating most simple type of heart and yeah quite many sizes that VPIP BFR stack size big blind Yeah, those are important ones, but I would say the most important one, well, of course, important one is the name of the player that you know that you are watching the correct heart, but total hands is something that I would say is the most important one. Because as in first a question, I said that, uh, or like total hands, but also, also like stat related hands that how, how many samples you have on these uh, certain statistic because basically for hard sample size of the statistics is everything because as I said in first question that we use hard to get additional info on the wheel lane and choose more optimal line from our default lines but the thing is that the common mistake of using hard is that you check that so statistics only that uh, it shows something, but the fact might be that we we'll, uh, we don't really we only have like one one sample of that situation happening. For example, it might be let's say three, but you get you have like less than ten hands on the wheel lane, and he has happened to three, but like two times, for example. And that would show show that his tree bet is extremely high, but that doesn't really tell anything. Overall, we we can't really adjust that. Yeah, this guy is maniac. His tree betting everything. If we haven't actually seen seen the hand he has been tree betting, so I would say that. Uh, total hands is the most important ones and when you start to use hard i think this one is totally okay you have a name of the opponent total hands and vpipr and pfr someone might say that i don't really get info from this that we only have two two statistics basically that but does what does this help but basically in sit and go or MTT or cash games any game basically what I often do is that I uh, categorize my opponent from BPIP or BFR that if it shows that villain is 40 slash 10 40 VPIP 10 BFR that already tells a lot of the villain type or if he's 20 slash 18, he's pretty reggae type. If he has really high, high VP, IPR, BFR 10, it might be that he's sort of maniac. 
but also in small sample it might mean that he's just has has had hot deck for example but basically how much we rely on the hard statistics should always be about the hand amount we have and that's common mistake that you guys will be saying that I do this because my heart shows this, but sample size is like 10 hands. <coughs> so, yeah, start from symbol, and when you are familiar in using symbol heart, start to add more. And for example, here, if, if we check the one I'm personally using, I have this basic statistics here on the first row and also Tornay adjusted PP which is basically the stack depth uh, with and this and, and he's adjusted into it and then I have after after those are familiar to you I would suggest adding something like uh, three bet statistics and these either steel statistics or race, race first in statistics because I think these are something that will give most info about Will Lane, how, how he plays from different positions and how much he treats and this doesn't take huge amount of hands to get some sort of picture but still good amount of hands that we can really really say that uh, how much how much the guy is changing his range from cutoff to button for example and yeah as our limit says also also for to steal, I have PP for to steal here, here on, on my heart. And then these post of aggression factors and CPET statistics, they, they tend to require much more of the hands because you don't that often get actually in situation where we then can, for example, CPET flop, CPET turn compared to overall hands so even if you have like thousand hands for some will lane you might not have really have much post of statistics on will lane but for example this my heart it's not that uh, complex one and you can also see that i have some text in here so you can if I remember correctly, you can here from the stat appearance, you can use different sort of colors for the ranges. You can add text in tier, use how many decimals you want to have tier, and also there is this min symbols. I haven't personally used these, but you can also add that if, if you don't have the certain hand sample, then you, this statistics is going to be only shown as line in the HUD, there's no numbers on it. And Alex asking what is the difference from adjusted PP to normal PP? Well, the main point is that Especially if you are playing games where anties are not the same always. For example, if you play MTTs in different sites, it might differ how big the anties are. So it can be statistic to account those anties better. Because if you are only using PP, it doesn't it doesn't care about the anties at all and also you can use something called m number but personally i haven't used that but it's basically about how many rounds your stack will 
how many how many round orbits it it takes for your stack to go go into entities and blinds so it basically accounts the entities and blinds in its own way but whatever to use m, num m, m number or adjusted big blind it's mostly about your own taste basically the main point is to account the entities in your decision making And yeah, some few in in adjusted entities. It's so that the entities are basically added together, and two thirds of the total sum of the entities is moved to PP, added to the PP, and one third to small blind, and you then get get the on the adjusted big blinds how big they are. And someone asking, not sure how I should say that name. Well, one one thing that it affects to using of the anti adjusted is that, for example, if you have hand like. Well, for example, in a stealing situation, when you think that are you shoving or not, if you have have some sort of hand that you don't want to be race folding, but you can't really race call either. It's it's way to, for example, if you have like queen jack suited from late position and you have ten on the adjusted big blinds, it's really often good line to be just shoving because it's going to be profitable. But using anti-adjusted after you have been using using big blind only, it doesn't really mean that if you have less than 10 BB anti-adjusted, that you could not have like min race folding range. If you only solve 10 BB or 10 ABP deep, then it's going to make your <coughs> Your game less optimal practically in practice. So of course it does require some work to actually benefit from using using the statistic as always. And one of the main point is that I I would say that never just copy or buy some hard that someone else has done. Because then it easily happens that you have uh, stats in your heart that during the game, or if if some if someone asks you that what is this statistic, you should be able to say it in instant that it's free bet against steal, for example. Because if you have to think about that, what the heck this stat, stat was. It's pretty sure that you don't really benefit from it during your during your sessions during the when you are when you are playing. So so start from simple and add stats one at a time or one type at a time and learn to use it. And there was questions if 90,000 hands VPI IP 28 BFR 15 3 bit 9.7 is this player bad? Well, well, at least his VPI and BFR has really huge gap. So I would say that he's, he's playing too passively overall. Too much limping, too much calling compared to racing. And three, but is kind of high, but doesn't really tell that much. Depends where you are playing. So, the 
so you can basically change the colors here, which can help help to read the HUD better. And you can add add text, which is which has the same purpose. Of course, if you are familiar with your HUD, it might also be best to not have any sort of text here to make the HUD smaller, because it can be sometimes problematic to find good spot for the HUD. For example, in some nine-handed table or ten-handed table. But I think that was enough enough from this HUD side. Uh, then we could, could go through how to use the different sort of reports from the Holder Manager tool. So we have a lot of made reports here. I haven't personally been using these really that much overall, but we have different sort of sort of reports here for example we could check quick quickly here that we have see if it's success for example that what sort of flop has been and flop texture has been and how many opponents there has been and how how well our seabed has been successful so it might be interesting to check some of the some of the situations. For example, here that if we if we check mm, from here, for example, that we have. Rainbow Ace High Flop. I would expect that flop flop C, but is relatively high even in even in mul against multiple opponents. But here might also be problem of sample size. But yeah, I haven't been using that one. That one really, but there is a lot of made reports here, and it's it, it's nice to go through through some of these and check check different sort. Personally, which I have been using most is, for example, this positional report, where you can pretty easily see that how how well you have been doing result-wise from different positions, how sort what sort of statistics you have on different positions and this is also is also something i personally go through through for new new uh, private coaching st students that how they are doing in in positional statistics and of course here in small blind and big blind you have to remember that BP is less 100. If you fold everything from BP, it's going to be minus 100 plus NT. So, and you can add different sort of sort of stats in every report. There is a lot of a lot of stuff here. So, if you are interested about about certain statistics that might it be interesting to check you can do it add it here for example overall steel success if we check from small blind we can see it has been 54 percent and when you think think that if you are for example without Andy's min raising from small blind if you if you steal more than 50 percent of time it's going to be automatically profitable and way less when there is anties as well uh, then there is of course the bas basic tournament winning grabs and so on and i like this tournament report if you want to find 
find hand histories because it it will list uh, tournaments separately so you can to use it to find some interesting hand histories if you want to send it to some someone or something like that and then there is also different sort of graphs preflop statistics here is for example this preflop activity activity report in here that this is like automatically filtering situations where someone has or there has been some sort of action before you so multiple razors razor and callers limpers and so on so if you are interested that how how are you doing doing in certain situations you can use use this one for example and of course you can always in every field uh, for example if we go to position and we would be interested that how we are doing how we are doing with certain hands for example let's say that we are interested about small suited aces we can then check that how those hands has gone from different from different positions Weak offshoot aces, well, from probably from early position, there is not that many. Especially if we, if we filter, for example, that we are, are with uh, it was actually here, effective stack greater than, let's say, 20 pp, for example. And yeah, well, yeah, it lists all of all of them, but I haven't been, of course, playing most of the most of the hands anyway. So here we can see that actually from VPI PPFR that weak offshoot aces have not been hands to play in early position, and so on. So so this is also also about the. Uh, how to use these different reports and filters for session analyzing so you can find find spots that are most in, uh, interesting ones or important ones and we could also check uh, how to mark hands during during games and i actually actually tried to use snap poker before the coaching but it said that hard is not working here so so let's start one hyper or super turbo let's take some small game so we can just We can just spew it away, so to say. Uh, so hand marking during the sessions is one of the most important sites, basically, because, for example, if you play couple hour session and you try to then remember hands that were giving you problems problems now I'm co probably going to drop out in the first hand but anyway could have actually folded just for for 
demo demo side. Well, let's fold so we can check how to mark the hand when it when it's added. So it should be. So in here we can just click that for review, for example. And now if we go for overall, overall and check data range for. For today, it should be should be foundable here as marked hand. If we click here for the marked hands, and it's here. So that is one way to mark hand. Then there is also option to. Uh, do I remember anymore where, where it can be found? But there is option to have a, a quick a quick key for marking hands. We'll try to find it. Let's try to spew away our game here. Or we can actually check. It was. At least before it was was it F9 for the current hand and F8 for previous hand if I remember right. If it's still working. Oh yeah, I got Got the queen ten suited as marked hand here by using F9 key. There was somewhere the settings for defining what the keys were for the different for those current hand and previous hand. I don't remember where the option was, but anyway, it should be somewhat easy to find. Well, yeah, you can also type type some sort of some sort of uh, so hot settings and hotkeys. Yeah, here here it was. You can also add whatever it was for review or some sort of other tag for the stat you have. So those is that is pretty important to have some sort of uh, that marking marking the hands during session because that is the situation where you most easily remember remember the hand if you if you after a couple hours session try to remember that what what hand was that the one one is giving me problem you maybe remember like couple or three or four but if there has been ten hands you would be interested to check later it's going to be practically impossible impossible to remember those all most likely so <coughs> so so try to mark hands during sessions Is there any sort of questions about using these different sort of reports or filters for viewers? And yeah, 
as Arne Metsä says that marking hands for review is really important. I would basically advise to that it's quite tough to actually mark too many hands. So if you are unsure of the situations or anything like that, then, then mark it and check can you find the answers for your questions yourself. If you, if you don't, you can, for example, use our Poker Eye Mania and analyzing section and analyzing section and ask other players' opinions on it. And yeah, good, good point from Danita as well that results doesn't really matter. Whatever you win the hand or lose, it doesn't really matter. If it, whatever it's good hand to mark or not. So. And yeah, these are, there is quite a lot of different sort of filters here that you can filter through different hands you can use. For example, if you have some hands that is not marked, but you remember that the flop was that sort of, you can use, for example, sport texture filters. And something I often use also to find certain type of situation might be to use these advanced action filters. For example, if we want to find situation where we have been open raising and we have C bet and someone has raised us, we could filter here that, oh, oh well, I think it goes like, like this. And we have been betting, or we can basically choose that, or we, that we have bet folded or bet gold, or or it might be even used to bet any maybe that it takes account all the situations where we have bet and there has been further actions required for us so we would then find hands where we have been raising and we have got check rate raised basically and from here other other advanced filters for example if you are interested about situation where you have been all in preflop or have not been all in preflop and so on so a lot of stuff that you can use to filter, filter different sort of situations. Now I finally drop out. And Alex asking that let's say you're starting to play new format and play for start this 3 to 5k SNCs. How can I see spots I'm losing chips and how can, how can I improve them? Well, basically, one thing you can first check is, is this positional report that how are you doing from different different positions and if there is like like some clear clear leaks that you are losing big amount from blinds or something like that then you can try to find the reason for that are you defending too little maybe too wide and so on and one of the good sites 
or one of one of the good ways to go through the game is also to just go through hand histories overall and check all of your decisions sometime now and then because you will then get you can focus on the one game at a time and <laughs> see if you have made made good decisions and of course it's always hard to find spots where you leak if you are only checking your game yourself so it's often about asking different players opinions or buying coaching or something like that that someone else is will look your game as well and one of the good sides is that if you if you find some some hand that you are uncertain of and can't or even if you do analyze it yourself and you find in your opinion good good reasoning you can also ask ask about it in hand analyzing area some questions of the Twitch chat well I try to open it again if it's if it's working previous time it showed just black screen and nothing else but I well now now it opened but I think I can't can't get the earlier questions here or messages visible so if there was some questions on the twitch you can also type it again in twitch chat so I can, I can see it or or write it on the over i mania chat so do we still have something something about these and yeah argument says that basically it's pretty hard to have positive results from the small blind, blind and big blind and basically something it of course depends also on what sort of games you are that if the games are tough then i think for example in pp if you have better than 30 minus 30 or minus 40 it's already pretty pretty good result so 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 but basically also if you are interested about this that for example if we are we can we could also go to go through of for example in pp defending spots that if we have some sort of weak hand or weakish hand we hand for example that let's say that we are with somewhat deeper stack let's say over 20 pp for example and we have some sort of or we don't really want to take necessarily that many hands let's say that we have media or offshoot hands something like this and when, it, when interested about certain kind of hands, I would advise to use use multiple hands from that same hand range, same sort of hands, because you want to have decent sample, <coughs> decent sample on the on the situations. So now we are on the PP and for example let's say that we are interested about situation where we are facing facing race so we can brief up facing bet size let's say that it's less than 3 PP for example so now we should be we have pretty small sample here 
and this is the problem of defining two two tin and trenches basically. Let's remove that filter and now we have bit bigger symbol. So for example here we have those mediocre offshoot hands and we can see that in 500 hands from pp when we have faced race that has been less than 3 pp size we have had minus 70 pp ev from overall whatever we have been folding or playing but in here it might look that yeah this has been really bad but you have to remember that if if I had been folding every one of these hands to raise, it has it would have been at least minus hundred dB, well, minus hundred pp per hundred. So defending this hand has been at least thirty pp better option in this sample than folding all of these. So so that's something to remember. And basically, what, what, how to improve yourself by, by doing session analyzing or, or other sort of analyzing is that I would recommend to mark hands as, as much as possible if you are unsure of them. And you can even mark like basic hands, basic uh, shoving spots. And so to just check that. For example, that what is the profitable showing range in some, some spot. And often that happens when you have some sort of marginal showing hands in your opinion. And you might find out that it might have been pretty clear show, show with that hand and maybe even with wider range than you assumed at first. So a lot of hand marking and then additional to those session analyzing you can also i would recommend to focus on certain area like for example defending pp with certain type of hands and you can can then improve yourself on that area or look through that how, how have you been doing when you have been defending and go through through the hands what has been your lines and try to define will lane ranges when you when you do that and so on. But we, we will talk about that side of things on the second part. But I think we can now keep small, let's say five minute break and then continue on the and analyzing area.